it's Sunday and it's that time again when we come together in our different fellowships and different places and we get to indulge ourselves in the Word of God. Welcome to it. This is your favorite channel. If you are on Facebook, it's at Victory Fellowship, BYO, at Victory Fellowship, BYO. If you are on YouTube, it's a Victory Fellowship 83. Victory Fellowship 83. So this is where we are coming together this Sunday to listen to the Word of God. Please take time, gather your family, gather your friends. Let's listen in and get something that will give us some energy for the next one of our life. God bless you. Enjoy the Word. Uh, greetings to the Victory Fellowship family. I humble myself under the leadership of Apostle Cain Haskin and Prophetess Bula. To all the pastors, the elders, the HODs, and all the brethren in Christ, we greet you. A special greeting goes to our viewers and our followers on the Facebook and the YouTube. We love you, we love you so much, and we continue to encourage you to share and like our page, share with your loved ones. Freely we have received and freely we give. So the gospel is for free and we are going to give it freely. Today we are going to have a topic that I've entitled, We Shall All Give an Account of Our Lives Before God. Giving an account of our lives before God, a message that we are drawing from Romans 14, verse 12. I want to say this is part one of this message. Uh, part two is coming. And this message is a call to know that this life that God has given us, especially after COVID, God has paid us. This life is not for worst. God has given us another chance to retrack our steps backward. It is a, a call to realize that we are not ordinary people. There is an accounting officer above, the principal accounting officer, the Lord himself. We are going to stand before him one of the good days and give an account of our lives. Why? Because we no longer live, but Christ lives in us. According to the word of God in Galatians 2, verse 20, we carry a big name around, the name of Jesus Christ. And also, if you read in the book of 2 Corinthians 2, verse 15, we carry the sweet aroma of Christ, Jesus. As we move around, we are carrying the sweet aroma of our Lord Jesus Christ. So today, as we carry that aroma of Jesus Christ, the sweet aroma which the world should actually follow, because the Lord Jesus is the one that has given us life. So, in today's message, I want to remind you that if you have not been in America or any other countries that you see on the globe, it doesn't necessarily mean that America doesn't exist. It's only that you have not been there, just like heaven, just like hell. You may not have been in heaven, you may not have been in hell, but that does not make it not existent. Heaven is real, hell is real. So today, I want us to have a dress rehearsal of one day when I'm going to stand before the maker and give an account of myself before the Lord. And remember, the Bible says, I'm going to give an account of myself, not my pastor, not my husband, not my wife, not my child, not my friend, not my colleague, but I'm going to stand before my maker and give an account. How did I live in this world? And as you give the account before the Lord, I believe there are two questions that God is going to ask you initially as you stand to give an account. The first question is going to be, did you receive Jesus as your savior? Did you receive Jesus as your personal savior? And if you say no, that there's good news for you today. If you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, this is the time that I want to encourage you to repent and give your life to Christ. And I want to tell you that your life will be secure in the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you repent and give your life to Christ, 
You know, the times of refreshing will come from the throne of grace. We are in a season where God is giving us a refreshment. So if you have not given your life to Christ, I want to encourage you, do not harden your heart, but give your life to Christ. You will not regret, even one day as you are going to stand before the throne of grace, accounting for your life, you will remember this message. You will remember this day. So my brother, my sister, wherever you are, I encourage you, give your life to Christ. You are not going to regret it. You are going to enjoy this walk with the Lord. And if your answer is going to be say, yes, I gave my life to Christ while I was still on earth. This is where I am encouraging you to work out your salvation with the fear and trembling until the day when you are going to account for yourself, your life, how you have worked, how you have lived, how you have influenced the world for Jesus. Work out your salvation with the fear and trembling. According to Philippians 2, 12, Paul encourages us to work out our salvation. Salvation is not an easy thing. It's a mammoth task where you have to wake up day and night. Am I still working with the Lord? Am I still pleasing the Lord? Am I still living a life of humility? Oh, there's pride in my life. So we need to work out our um, salvation with fear and trembling. And then the second thing, if you have received the Lord as your personal savior, God is going to ask you about the great commission. What did he do? Because remember Jesus in Matthew 28 verse 19, where he said, go ye therefore to the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And Jesus is saying, Lo, I will be with you always to the end of times. So God is going to ask us to account for the great commission. All of us have got a mission field to preach. There are people where the mighty men of God are not going to reach, but you are the person to reach those people. And who are those people? These are your family, your friends, your colleagues, your neighbors, because these are the people in your life and God is expecting you to reach out to them with the good news so that one day they are going to stand before their maker, giving an account of their lives. They will remember that brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, they shared the good news about Jesus. I just want to pause and ask you, wherever you are, how many souls have you won for Christ? How many souls are you going to present on the day of accounting to say, Lord, these are the souls that I want for the kingdom of heaven? If you have none, there's still chance. I want us to go out there and preach the gospel and bring many, many people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus died for all of us. That's why the book of Luke says, bring them. They are in the hedges, they are in the bridges, they are in the highways. Call them, bring them in, into the house of the Lord. The house, there's still room for you. There's still room for someone in the house of the Lord. I want us to imagine that one day when you go to heaven, people are going to welcome us to heaven. And these are the people that you preach the word of God. And if you are going to go earlier, remember that you are going to welcome them. And, and I can imagine the joy of receiving one another in eternity. So my brother, my sister, you have a task. As long as you've got breath in you, share the good news. Bring as many, as many people that you can to the house of the Lord. God wants to spend eternity with all of us. God doesn't want anyone to die in their sin. And number three, I want to believe that God is going to ask you, did you understand who God is? For the Bible is clear about who God is. In Exodus 20 verse 3, he said, you, you, you shall not have any other gods before me. You shall not bow down to any other god. I am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers to the third and the fourth generation. But also at the same time, 
showing compassion and steadfast love to a thousand generation of those who love me and keep my commandment. I encourage you to be let be those people that are going to love the Lord and keep his commandment. In the same chapter, Exodus 20 verse 8, it says, you shall not take the name of the Lord in vain. The Lord will not hold you guiltless if you take his name in vain. Believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you call upon the name of Jesus, you are going to be saved. As you call upon the name of Jesus, expect the results because that name has got power. And the Bible says in the book of Psalms 138 verse 2, he has exalted his name above everything. So we should not take the name of the Lord in vain. The Lord expects us on the day of accounting for ourselves. Matthew 22 verse 37, it says you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And this is the first in the great commandment. Are you loving the Lord with everything that is in you? With an undivided attention. The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Today, I don't know what you are looking for. Some of us, we are looking for health. Some are looking for marriages. Some are looking for business um, uh, adventures. But all those are additionals. My brother, my sister, wherever you are, I encourage you, seek the Lord. Make the Lord your priority. And all these things will be added unto you. God will remember to add all those things. But I realize that this world, the world is upside down. We are seeking first the additionals, the benefits before God. But remember, today I'm going to talk about, I'm talking about accounting for myself. How will I stand before the Lord and account how I loved him with all my soul, with all my body, with everything that is in me, with all my substance? The Lord desires that you love him. My brother, my sister, you will not regret to put him as the priority, the first thing in your life. Each and every day, just put him as the very first thing on the top of your life. Remember, he says in Numbers 23, verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie, or a son of man that he should change his mind. Yes, he said, and will he not do it? Has he spoken, and will he not fulfill it? It's true that he has spoken. That one day, we are going to give an account of our lives. So let's believe this God. When I was a young Christian, I used to pray earnestly and say, God, I don't want a God that is miles and miles away. I really felt that God was far away from me. But as I read the scriptures, as I read Jeremiah 23, verse 23, he says, I'm not a God who is far away. I'm a God that is near. As I continue to read the scriptures, in John 14, verse 23. And Jesus answered them, like Jesus was answering me, that if you love me, if anyone loves me, he will, he will keep my commandment. He will keep my word. And my father will love him. And we, I like that part, and we, the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit will come and make our home with him. So today, will you not invite the Godhead, according to the word of John 14, 23, that they will come and make a home with you. They will dwell with you. So now I realize that God is not far away. He's just a breath away. As I call upon him, he hears me. Now I realize that he is in my house. He is with me wherever I am. I've also said, number four, you are not alone in this life. Remember that picture where this man died and wherever God was showing him, wherever he went in this world, and wherever he went, there were two sets of footprints. Everywhere he went, there were two sets of uh, footprints. And then this man realized that at some point, 
they would go, the two of them. But at some point, there was one set of footprints. And he was worried what was happening. And he asked God, God, I realized that this is me and this is my life as I was moving in this world. But I realized at some point, there was one person walking. What was happening? And Jesus replied, my daughter, my son, on those times, things were too hard for you and I had to carry you. Wow, the Lord carries us when things are not going well. When things are too heavy for us, the Lord will carry you. So we also want to talk about as we account for our lives, God desires that we don't live alone. We'll continue to read from the book of John 14. I'll read from verse 16 to verse 18. I will ask the Father, these are Jesus' words, and he will give you another helper. You know, I've read this verse many times, but as I was preparing this message, I realized the word another helper. It means I was reading, but I was missing another helper. So Jesus is there for us. But before he went, he promised his disciples, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. For he dwells with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Wow. The Lord Jesus Christ left us with the Holy Spirit. That's why initially I was talking about if you don't know the Lord, the Bible is clear that you will not know the Holy Spirit because you will not receive him. But as you are going to give your life to Christ today, he will come and dwell in you, your helper. And the Bible is saying, I'm not leaving you as orphans. But God is going to ask, ask us on the day of accounting for our lives. Did you not live as a spiritual orphan? In today's language, you talk about orphans and vulnerable children. Are you not an orphan and a vulnerable child in terms of spiritual life? I want to remind you that the Holy Spirit is there to help you. And I've learned as I was growing in my Christian walk that God, the Holy Spirit, helps us in everything, in all areas of our lives. As I was growing, I used to think that the Holy Spirit only helps me in praying, in reading the word, in spiritual things. But no, the Bible doesn't tell us that. He says he's your helper. So as you do your laundry, as you clean your house, as you do your business, as you live in your marriage, the Holy Spirit is there to help you. I remember this one particular day. I was very busy on this Saturday. I had too much on my plate. And I was tempted to jump out of my bed without doing my devotions. But then something told me, even if the day is busy, as I do the first things first, devotion first, the Holy Spirit is going to make sure that the day is well scheduled. So I did my devotion. And guess what? After the devotion, you know, things began to clear to me how I was going to handle the day. And that, that was not a stressful day. So what am I saying? God is going to ask you to account. Why did you ignore the Holy Spirit? The Bible encourages us, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Are we not grieving the Holy Spirit? As we are going to look at our lives, reflect on our lives, I want to encourage us that the Holy Spirit is your helper. He is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Just like the word of, of God says in Proverbs 18, verse 24, he is Jehovah Shama, our present help in times of need. If you want to be productive at your work, whatever in your business, I encourage you, invite him, start your day with him, end your day with him, you will not regret. As you are going to give an account of our lives, we want to make sure that we say, Lord, the, the, the life on the earth was was difficult, but thank God there was God, the Holy Spirit, my helper, the present help in times of need. And then number five, God is going to ask us, how did you relate with the word of God? The word of God is the sword of the spirit. 
Paul says in Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is living and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and the spirit, the joint and the marrow, and it is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. What are the characteristics of a living thing? It means the word of God can breathe. It can breathe life in your situation. It means the word of God can touch. The word of God can touch you in your situation. It has got senses just like any living thing. It is powerful. As I was thinking about what is it that can separate the bone and the marrow? What is it that can separate the spirit and the, uh, and the soul? I realize that it is only death that can separate. So the word of God is as powerful as death. So let us stand on the truth of the word of God. Let the word of God have the final say in our lives. Let us be moved by the authority that is in the word of God. Let's stand upon it, step on faith on the word of God. Because God, he will make sure that his word will, pe will perform that which he has sent to perform. Let the word of the Lord be the lamp unto your feet and the light unto your path. For the Bible says the, the steps of a righteous man, they are ordered by God. This morning I want to challenge you. What is ordering your steps? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Let the word of God order your steps. Let the word of God order your steps each and every day. Jeremiah 15 verse 16. Jeremiah understood the power of the word of God. He says, your words were found and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name. So the word of God can bring joy. It can bring rejoicing. So as you read the word of God, read it with understanding. When I was reading the book of Proverbs 4, I think verse 22, it says the word of God can bring life, it can bring health to those that will find it. So the word of God is powerful. I don't know how you relate with the word of God, but I encourage you that the word of God, read it, relate with it, Love it. John 1 verse 1. It says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. So the word of God is actually God himself. Speaking to you each and every day. I encourage you, read the word of God. Meditate upon it. Befriend it. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand it. Jeremiah in his ministry he was threatened. Don't speak in this word. Stop speaking about this word. Then I'm sure Jeremiah, in the stress of the moment, in the frustration of the moment, we hear from Jeremiah 20, verse 9. Then I said, I will not mention him, nor speak any more in his name. But his words was in my heart, like burning fire, shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding back, and I could not. So let the word of God be like fire, shut up in your bones. And if there's fire in your bones, you can't be stable. You are jumping, you are, you are irritable. But this day, I want to encourage you. Let, preach the word of God. Share the word of God. Read it with your family. Read it your, yourself. When it is preached, meditate upon it. Be like the church in Berea. After the preaching of the word, go search the scriptures. What is God saying? And ask the Lord, these scriptures, what are you saying? What do you want me to do? So that when I stand before the, my living God, on the day of accounting for myself, I will say, Lord, this is what I hear and I read from the word of God. This is how I lived according to the word of God. This is how I believed the word of God. This is how I was guided by the word of God. The word of God, you will not go wrong. 
So let's love it. The word of God is, you know, it's a hammer. It can hammer situations. The word of God can fight our battles. The word of God can do great and mighty things. If you read in the Bible, the people that have gone before us, they've used the word of God. I remember this prophet when the mighty army was coming. He just took the letter that the enemy was threatening and spread it before God and said, God, this is what the enemy is saying, but I know you to be God who fights my battle. Allow God to fight your battles. Do not go it alone. The Lord is there to fight your battles. You have the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. That two-edged sword that can pierce between the bone and the marrow, between the soul and the spirit, that is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So my brother, my sister, I don't want you to go before God one day as you account for your life and say, I didn't understand. Maybe the Bible was too big for me, but God encouraged you. Read one, one, one verse at a, day, at a time. Meditate on it. Ask someone. Share with a friend. I tell you, the word of God is going to change your life. Then number seven, we are going to account about our faith. Do I believe in the Lord? Do I have faith that God is a living God? Do I have faith that there is heaven, there is earth? Do I have faith that one day I will stand before the maker and give an account of my life? The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews 11, 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes must believe that God exists and he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek you. My question today is, do you diligently seek the Lord? Do you have the faith to diligently seek him? You know, one day I had to to ask myself and say, Lord, I want this word to work for me. I want this word to work for me. And I had a situation. I needed school fees for my son. I didn't have the money. I didn't know where to go. But I, I, I stood upon the word of God in Philippians 4 verse 6, which says, do not be anxious about anything. Do not be anxious about anything, but in prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, Make your request known to me. And that time my son was going to fly to China and the days were going by and I didn't know how I was going to raise the $2,000. But I stood upon the word of God. I said, God, I'm not going to be anxious. And you know what, brethren? I would sleep like a baby and wake up the following day, I don't have $2,000. I don't even know where to go. Second day, the same. You know, at times I wake up and say to myself, am I no more? But I said, Lord, I'm standing upon the word of God. I need these coffees. I didn't know what to do, but I practiced the word of God. And I know when there were two or three days to go, I was telling to my son, saying, no, you can fly. And then me in between, and my son was saying, no, I'm not going anywhere until the fees is enough. This is a foreign country. I'm just starting. I don't know the system. And that was true. And on the last day, I was still standing upon the word of God. I was not anxious. I was not worried. I just continued my prayer. Lord, I need school fees. And do you know what? Guess what? The Lord is a faithful God. He dropped a name in my heart. And when I found the person to say, I need 2,000 US dollars. And the person just said, come, let's meet. 10 o'clock, I'll give you. That was a miracle. But I want to thank you. That was the day I realized that the word of God, the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, it can actually move mountains. Great and mighty things can happen. And that person gave me the fees, and I gave him back afterwards. And that was God. I stood upon the word of God. I tested God on his word, and he proved himself faithful in the word of God. So we need to have faith in the Lord. Our faith should not fail. Because when your faith fails, it means you are dead. Faith should not fail. Faith should keep you on your toes. Faith should tell yourself that it will happen. There's a God in heaven. God hears my prayer. God answers prayer. God does great and mighty things that we do not know. That's why the Bible told, tells us, call unto me and I'll answer you and I'll show you great 
and mighty things that you do not know. So as you lift up your faith, the faith that is as small as a mustard seed, God is going to show you great and mighty things that you do not know. I want to tell you that you might think you know your child. You don't know the child. You might think you know your husband. You don't know the husband. You don't know the wife. But if you seek the Lord, he will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. So let us lift our faith. Let us exercise our faith. As small as a mustard seed, it can, it can, it can move mountains. It can change our situations. It reminds me of Paul in the book of 1 Timothy 6. I'll read from verse 11 to verse 12. Paul says, but you, you Timothy, O man of God, flee all these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness, fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. So we need to fight for our faith. Otherwise, the devil wants to take away that faith so that you, 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 you say, I have never seen God. Where is this God? Why are things happening? But Paul says to Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were called and you have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. We need to fight for our faith. Then that's why I understand in the book of Luke 22 verse 31. Indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith, that your faith will not fail. I realize that Jesus knew that I couldn't pray for Peter to continue praying. But if only that his faith will not fail, he's going to stand all the situation. And this is the same Peter that we see in the jail. They wanted to kill him for Jesus. He is the one who did mighty miracles. Why? Because Jesus prayed for him that his faith will not fail. And he said, when you have gone back, strengthen your brothers. My brother, my sister, as you hear my voice, I want to strengthen you. Stand on your faith. I know the situation might not appear as promising, but let your faith stand strong. The Lord hears you. The Lord will answer you. The Lord will move in a mighty way. So today I am strengthening you to stand upon your faith, that your faith will not fail you, that even if you are going to stand on the day of accounting for your life before the Lord Jesus Christ, you say, Lord, I stood by my faith. Nothing moved. I knew that your word is true and that faith has taken me this far. I know that this life, even if you are going to live a hundred years, it's, not, it's nothing as compared to eternity. Even if you are going to live a hundred years, that is nothing as compared to eternity. So I want to encourage you today. The Lord expects you to live a life that will represent him well. If you have decided to be a Christian, just be a Christian. I ask myself that if all of us as Christians, we live according to the principles of God, we walk according to the word of God, you know, this world will be different because the Lord has called us as Christians to be the salt of this world, to be the light of this world. I want to challenge you today. How are the people around you testing? Because you have seasoned them. You are supposed to be seasoning them. Have you given salt to the relish around you? How are the people testing around you? Are they feeling the zeal of saving the Lord? Are they encouraged by your work in the Lord? Are they encouraged by seeing you diligently seeking the Lord? Are they encouraged by your conduct? Are they encouraged by your speech? It reminds me of Paul when he says to Timothy, Timothy, 
Do not let anyone despise you because of of your age, because you are young. But set an example in your speech, in your conduct, in everything that you do. Set an example. I want to encourage you. We are representing Christ. And we need to represent him well. Because when the day comes, when you are going to give an accounting of how we lived this life, we are going to be guided by the truth. That is in the word of God. So this word of God, may it guide our lives. May it be the book that will help us to account. That we can refer that Jesus, this is how I lived my life. Because the Bible says this and that. This is our guide. May the word of God guide us each and every day as we walk this walk of faith. And remember that you are going to give an account before God. I don't want you to be afraid of giving an account, but I want you to be excited. As you live your life, I want you to be excited that this is how I'm going to present my life because I have lived well. Just like Paul, when he said, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. You know, he was happy. He was satisfied that I did all that was within my power. I did all that God called me to do. He fought a good fight and he finished the rest. That's why even in his last days he was saying, to die is gain, to live is gain. To him it was neither death. When I die, I will meet the Lord and I will give an account for my life. And when I live, I will continue preaching the gospel so that many will come to the knowledge of the living God. So I encourage you today, I give you a challenge. One day, you, one day, myself, I'm going to stand before the Lord and give an account for my life. And give an account for my life. I normally tell people that when you are going to give an account before God, there is going to be a video of how you walked in this earth. And that video is going to be played. I know we have gone places. Some of the places we are, not, we are even ashamed to think about them. But thank God we have got a God that can forgive us. As we know that that video is going to be played about my life, this message is meant to help you from today onwards that I want to make things right. I want to live for my Lord. I want to be an ambassador. I want to be a true representation of Jesus Christ. My brother, my sister, God loves you. God loves you. He understands. He wants you to live a fulfilled life. He wants to bless you. He wants to anoint you. He wants to do great and mighty things in your life. So while you are living, remember, one day, one day, one day, you are going to give an account of yourself before the Lord. May the Lord bless the sharing of his word. Thank you.